Hey everybody, this is John from John's Long Box, and I was looking for my Will Eisner uh, graphic novel. I know it, they're all stored in a box, and I stumbled upon this, and I dropped everything, and I haven't looked through this in a while, and I know it's not comic books, but uh, it's comic book adjacent. This is uh, Dungeons & Dragons Advanced D&D, &D, The DDs and Demigods. Uh, this book is super influential in my life. Just look at this. This is all TSR presents. Uh, Deities and Demigods. The Cyclopedia of Gods and Heroes from Myth and Legend. This was a compilation of, uh, for all those who don't know, it's a compilation of all the, uh, you know, Greek mythology, uh, all the different mythologies, Japanese mythology and stuff like that, and put f with, the, with Dungeons and Dragons rules. Uh, TSR, the Game Wizards. This cover is by Errol Otis. For those of you who are Played Dungeons and Dragons. I played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. Matter of fact, I, I still play a role-playing game called uh, Villains Vigilantes. Although uh, since I moved, my game group kind of fell apart, and I'm trying to re-establish everything. So we'll we'll get that. Okay, but this book, like I said, this is super influential in my life. So I I got to talk about this. Let me know if if you like non-comic book stuff. I mean, I know it's a comic book channel, but I, I think you guys would appreciate this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we all all he was one of the kids that we used to play with when we, when I was a little kid and uh he took my book because uh my book was the first printing that had the Yamelna bone and the Cthulhu mythology and then uh his book didn't so he took mine wrote his name in it and uh <laughs> swapped them like I wouldn't notice okay this is 1980 TSR Lake Geneva I actually went to a Gary Con these are the illustrators Errol Otis, I already said. The, the cover painting by Errol. Yep, I was by James Ward. Okay. Look, look at that. That's another Errol Otis. Errol Otis does all that squiggly, wiggly, wormy artwork that I we love from D&D. &D. Here's the forward. Do you know? I've had this book for most, probably longer than most of you people, but my viewers have been alive, and I've never read that. I'll the contents. Look at that. That's Poseidon. I love that. Uh, more okay, explanation of rules. I'll skip all of this. I'll just look for pictures. Explaining the character classes, omens, divine. I, I read all of this. Okay, the American Indian mythology. What I tr did was, when I got this book, I read it over and over and over again. And I tried to read up on all the myths. So I, I, I got... A, I'll show you my, my, my actual book room once I've finished setting it up. It's just shelves of, of books about mythology. So we got the Raven, Coyote. I, I can't pronounce these names. I'm not even going to try. Hiawatha. Hrotu. Okay, these, these names I... I got to admit that the American mythos, the American Indian mythos, I know the least about. Thunderbird. I had a friend in college who she was in she was American Indian at Cheyenne and she would tell me about the Thunderbird. Okay, the Arthurian heroes. That's just that's the Jeff D drawing. Recognize that before you retire signature. The Knights of This book this this chapter got me to a I was in fifth grade and I got a huge hardcover copy of Le Morte Arthur from my school library. And I just kept checking it out. I, I had it for most of the school year. And, you know, every couple of weeks we'd go back to the library and I would just recheck it out. And uh, school psychologist took me and asked me questions about the book. <laughs> so there's, there's King Arthur. King Arthur fighting a troll, a D&D &D troll. There's Sir Galahad. I'm going to go rather quick. Sir Gawain. This this was the beginning of my love of the Arthurian knights. I mean, even even before I had this book, you, you knew about King Arthur and and all that Merlin. Let's see, Merlin was a fifteenth uh, level magic user. That's it. Okay, Morgan the Fay, so Palamedes, King Pellinor, the Babylonian myth. Oh, as I said, I, everybody knew about the Arthurian. Well, at least I did, but but. When I read this, I just kind of got obsessed with them, and I carried that book around for my entire. It was either fourth grade or fifth grade, and I had index cards with with notes 
just just stuffed to the gills. I wish I still had those notes. The Babylonian mythology. Uh, this I knew nothing about. And it's funny, you see this little line? I think at one point I was putting lines through uh, beings and gods that I used. Who knows if what I did with Anu, I don't remember. We were very bad dungeon masters back then. Gilgamesh. Ishtar. Marduk. For some reason I always thought that was cool. Marduk fighting Tiamat. Nurgle, Lord of the Underworld. Raman, God of Thunder. The Celtic Mythology. This is probably the other one I know nothing about. I got a book on Celtic Mythology and then I packed up to, to, to move out west and it, I, I never dug it out. I really Now that I'm digging out everything, I, I should read it. So, even though I have Irish ancestry, I know nothing about Celtic mythology. Hope this isn't blurry. I, I, I love the art style in this. I, there's no way I could pronounce these names. There's... I, I, I can't... Agma. Sylvanas. The Wild Hunt. I kind of became obsessed with the Wild Hunt for a while. I, I wanted to write a, a comic book based on the Wild Hunt. And of course, this is the D&D &D version. So, you know, once I got the uh, other books, I, I learned about Central America. One of my childhood friends, his father was an archaeologist in Central America. So, you know, we would play Dungeons Dragons till wee hours of the morning and then sleep on the couch surrounded by, by these scary artifacts. You know, they kind of looked like this all over his house. It was kind of creepy, kind of scary, you know, in, in, the, in the darkness playing tricks on you. My problem with, with the Central American, Aztec, and Inca gods is I just can't pronounce their names. And when you can't pronounce somebody's name, you don't really develop an attachment to it. As, as the Chinese mythology. Fire Jump, the Dancing Sword of Lightning, Shang-Ti. Ah, this, this, ah, this is bringing back such memories. I hope you're enjoying this. I'm, I'm going to go quicker, so I we're not here all, all night. Look, look at that. No cha. Ma Yuan. I know I'm butchering these names. Okay, here's the one I remember. The Cthulhu mythology. I remember I was just so confused by this. I was like, what is this? Who are the Cthulhus? You know, everything else is named after... Look at my hands. I'm, I took a break from painting. I'm almost done. I'm filthy. But uh, I was like, who are the Cthulhu people? I, I, I didn't know. And then, you know, read all this and explained. And I remember going to my local public library and finding these three hardcover books. I just took them out. And when you're in fourth and fifth grade, reading H.P. Lovecraft is nigh impossible. And I, I just kept trying and kept trying and kept trying and reread re -read them and reread them. And I, I still still have a love for Lovecraft, and a lot in my in my uh, role playing games. There's a lot of Lovecraft. But Cthulhu, I was just like, what is that thing? You know, it's so cool. Armor class two, yeah. <laughs> you can't put stats on a elder being. The Azathoth, the Bayaki, looks nothing like that. The way the way it was described in the book, it looks almost like a like a a wasp, a horse-like wasp with wings, you know, the deep ones, I always thought that was such a cool picture, the deep one, Oster the Unspeakable, looks nothing like that in the description, he looks like a man with a, with a yellow, yellow hood, these are great, the great race, Migo, that's pretty much the way they were described, the primordial ones, that's pretty much exactly what this script. Shoggoths are just lob, and that's one thing I, I found out that the universal monsters, well, you know, the Shoggoth, they, they, a lot of them owed to Lovecraft. Like the creature from Black Lagoon was a deep one, and the deep ones to sometimes go after women to to produce more deep ones, and the Blob was a Shoggoth. Yarlathotep is my favorite. There's no picture of him. And I remember just looking at this picture. That's perfect for Aralotus, this Shub Negroth, this 
the Black Goat of the Woods with a thousand yards. And Yog Saga, that's probably my second favorite. And then the Dunwich, the Dunwich Horror in D and D style. And then the Egyptian mythologies. I, I I found this to be hard to keep up with because the this as I read Greek uh Greek Egyptian mythology then I read another story, and they're like, they contradict each other, you know, they, they don't match. But then you realize that Egypt is thousands, you know, the, the, it's different cultures, di you know, the same country, but it's it's so old. Every 2,000 years, it's like a different different country, different mythology and everything. So once once I learned that, I, I got a little bit better with, with Egyptian mythology. Geb. That was a chorus. I made up a, a comic book character when I was a kid. He was like, like Thor. My ripoff was Horus, and then Alan Moore did one in his 1963 series, Isis. You know, not the terrorist group, the uh, goddess of magic and fertility. Osiris. The Phoenix. I never, you know, this is one of Phoenix was part of Greek uh, Egyptian mythology. Ta, Seker. That's just a classic drawing. Set the bad guy. Shu, Master of the Sky, Tefnut, Thoth, who's become my favorite of the Egyptian gods. And then a little crash course in mythology. D and D I mean hieroglyphics, D and D style. I have a <laughs> finished mythology. Oh here's more hieroglyphics. Again I'm going really quick. I'm already up to eleven minutes and I'm only up to F. The finished mythology. This I, I just like these these drawings, and I knew nothing of Anemonian Atu. I, I, I knew nothing about these, you know, the Finnish mythology. I just assumed that all this, you know, Finland, Scandinavia was, was rolled into Norse mythology. So I, I, I didn't know. So uh, it talks about here that, you know, the, the Kalvala is their collection of, the, of their mythology. So uh, I got a job, and then I would have to go to take classes after after work and I had like a two hour period between work and school and uh, everybody would just go to the bar and drink and I, I didn't want to do that so uh, right next to I, I worked and school was right next to my job it was really convenient and uh, right in between was a Hooters so I would sit there for two hours do my homework and then I pulled out this copy of the Kalvala so I'm sitting there reading all dirty from work and reading the Kavala, and I noticed that there was two guys just looking at me, you know, and making faces. So, you know, whatever, let them look at me. I don't care. And then uh, finally, when they were leaving, they came up to me. Like, they said, uh, "Are you reading the Kavala?" I was like, "Yeah." And I noticed they had an odd accent. And I said, "Oh, because we're from Finland. We're here visiting, and we had to stop at a Hooters. And the last thing we expect to see is a." construction worker I mean it was obvious I was a construction worth, worker with my uh, sturdy face and, and my, my orange safety orange shirt and everything like that bag of tools you know reading the Kabbalah in a Hooters I said eh, well you know at the time I was it was Manhattan I was like hey, Manhattan's a cosmopolitan place <laughs> so here I am reading Finnish mythology in a Hooters Greek mythology of course this was as a kid I think it was I, I don't know where but I found this I don't know where it came from but it, it in my on my shelf in my bedroom there was a co hard copy of uh, Edith Hamilton's mythology and I think that's like the book that taught me how to read I just tried and tried and tried and I read that over and over and over again until I got more understanding and more understanding so I, I, I was totally obsessed with Greek mythology this, this Zeus yeah Achilles there's Aphrodite Apollo looking like an elf. Ares. <laughs> I don't know if I did it, but changed his armor class to minus seven. Artemis. Athena. Atlas, the Titan. Kerberos. That's one thing. The C's are pronounced like K's. So it's Kirsi or Kirki. Koyas. Krias. And it's pronounced Kyclops. Cyclops. I guess I tried to draw something. <laughs> Dionysus. Furies. Hades. 
I always liked Hades. Hecate. Or Hecate. He I cannot pronounce that. Hecaton Kayakri. Hephaestus. Hera. Heracles. Hermes. Kronos. Odysseus. I, Odysseus was my favorite as a kid. I, I've since dropped him as my favorite. Poseidon. I kind of have a... P Perseus I also loved. I remember, I, I think it was third grade in my school. The older kids, the fifth graders, put on a... Maybe sixth grade, I don't remember. They put on a play. And my friend, her brother, was, was Perseus in the play. I... I was enraptured by this play. I, I, I would love to see if somebody videotaped it and watch it again to see if it, but in my memory that was the greatest, greatest thing. I love that play. It's Prometheus. The Indian mythos. I read up on, on the Indian mythos. But not like I did the Greek mythology. These are Jeff D drawings. Rudra. Like I'm, again I'm going quick. It's Vishnu Garuda. Okay, Yama. The Japanese mythology. I uh, read up on Japanese mythology, but uh, it wasn't until Yosha Yosagi Yojimbo. You know, I've been reading that comic for, for decades now, too. She plays a big part in the grass cutter story. And Hachiman. Raiden, God of Thunder, and Protection of Fletchers. This picture I always thought was funny. Like, what was he doing? Like, I, I know what it is now. It's a mace behind his head, but it, it just looked like he was flailing his, pulling his hair out and spraying hair all over the place. <laughs> Reiko. Susano. Okay. Right. And here's the other one, the Melnabonian myth. Like, this was another one that... that I didn't know what this was, you know, and then I saw that it was, look how dirty my book is, you know, we would drink soda and eat at the table. But the Melnobonians w was created by uh, Michael Moorcock, and it was uh, this fictional land called, uh, and uh, Elric was the, the last king of Melnobon, the, this decadent, dying empire island of, of, like, these people were all, like, just uh, Epicurean and everyone knew magic and they were the ancient so think of them as like the I'm trying to think draw compare like the in ancient Rome think of them as like the Etruscans these were the older wiser people but uh this always bothered me he's chaotic evil and you know a few times we broke him out to uh to play in V&V &V and fight up fight up the, the player characters it was kind of like a threat because he has Stormbringer the ultimate sword this sword is a living being that transformed into the shape of a sword, and when it, in the, according to V and V, e, when it hits you, it either takes away half your hit points or all your hit points. That's it. And if it kills you, you cannot be resurrected. But in, in the books, the black sword feeds on the souls of the. That's why you can't be resurrected. You have no soul, and the, the sword would feed on blood and and souls, and then channel power to him. So he was an albino. He he was weak. And uh, feeble, but when he held this, and he used like magic herbs to, to to give him power to walk around. But then when he got the sword, just holding the sword made him powerful, like a, a regular person. You know, canceled out his weaknesses. But the more he used the sword, the stronger and more powerful he got. And it kind of became like an addiction. And then there's a couple of times when he didn't want to use the sword, and the sword overrode his will, and he he killed his his the love of his life, and his cousin, wow, Samoral. But I reread the Melnobonium mythology. I had a long commute, and I'd be sitting on buses and stuff. And uh, I read the books like three, four years ago. He's not chaotic evil. If anything, he was like, I wouldn't call him good, but he was like definitely like a lawful character who he, he destroyed Melnobon because of the chaos and the decadence. And, you know, he, he, he worked for the gods. His moon glum, like sometimes... Uh, 
sidekick. Ariok, this is the god of chaos. Blood and souls for my lord Ariok. I, I don't remember. This is like the only good god that, that they mentioned. Don Bless, the justice maker. The, I, uh, even though I read all the books, I barely remember them. Grom. We always liked Grom, me and my friends. Hashashak. Kakatao. I remember uh, he stabbed Kakatao with a, with a, with Stormbringer, and it almost killed him. He he took so much power from this being that it almost incinerated El, uh, Elric. The Kelmanes. These men are like solid gold warriors. More Daz. Mern. <laughs> Pere, I always liked the concept of Pere, this octopus god who, who uh, took all the all the sailors that d died at the sea and used them as like an undead army. Kind of scary. Strasha. I, the, he summoned Sasha. He, he, he had a bond with the elemental lords and he summoned Strasha to, uh, to uh, make a storm. Vampire trees. That's such a cool concept. The leaves come down and land on you and suck your blood and then float back up into the tree and nourish the tree. The Philip Karna, the wizard from Pang Taang, th there was a small island. Uh, Malnabone was an island. So think of Malnabone as like England and think of Pang Taang as like a, either Iceland or Ireland. And they were the rivals. They, they were also masters of magic, but uh, but the Malnabonians were uh, more ancient, more wise, and more decadent. Vulture lines, tell me that's not cool. That is just a... Cool. That's up there with Owl Bear as, as some of my favorite, and this is Urquun. This was El Elric's cousin, and uh, next in line for the th for the Ruby Throne, and he had Mornblade, which is his sword was an exact replica of uh, of, of Stormbringer. They were, they were twins, and when they fought, it was just like explosions when these things happened. And uh, his sister was Samoral, and he threw Samoral at at Elric. And Elric tried to move his sword out of the way, but but Stormbringer wasn't having it, and he killed. And the Nuhan mythology. I just reread these. This was a. Uh, why can't I think of the. Fritz Lieber. Fritz Lieber was another. And this was, uh, you know, made up by Fritz Lieber, and it was Farft and the Grey Mouser. And I read all these, like Swords Against Deviltry, Swords Against. Swords Against. Uh, why can't I think of it? But that's Swords Against uh, Devil Tree, and Lankmar was their city, and uh, it was the greatest city in the world. And he he was a barbarian from the frozen north, and he was a poor thief from Lankmar itself. And he he apprenticed under a wizard, and he he I don't want to say minor uh, magical abilities because he did some really cool things. And magic was very rare like they didn't have magic weapons stuff like that but there was spell casting and it was hard and it was strenuous i kind of i kind of like the idea of it and he he was like six foot six and he was tiny they were exact opposites he was all red red hair red beard and he was tiny and always wore gray so he was a thief and he was just this barbarian hulking barbarian cold woman death death was a, a god that lived in like the solar point of Nuon. Nuon was the name of their world. And every once in a while he would just come down and his sword if he just bing, touched you, you die. No saving throw, nothing. It was just he was an, I remember the guy who taught me how to play Dungeons and Dragons. He just, you would use him as a threat to get you to do what you want. But, and uh, Farf, one of Farfred's girlfriends was, was a ghoul. They were these men and women and their skin was transparent. And Every book that had different girls, different different lovers, and one of them was was a ghoul. This, the gods of Lankmar, I I love this concept. They lived in this dilapidated cast like temple in the middle of Lankmar, and when Lankmar was under threat, you'd go and knock on their door and implore them, and they would come out. They were these undead liches and rotting corpses, and they would come out and they would just mess up whatever was attacking you, and then on the way back they would wreck the city. As, as like a warning, don't call us unless you really need us, you know, so you called them, you were you were in uh, serious, serious trouble hate, I 
like this concept of this like vaporous thing that, that influenced your emotions. Isaac of the Jug. Fafford became a priest of uh, Isaac of the Jug for a little while. He discovered religion. And uh, while Faf discovered religion, Grey Mouser became like a, a mob boss. And they were at odds in one of the books. <laughs> and after a while, Faf is like, ah, enough. Enough with that. I just thought this guy was cool. I thought he looked like the, the King Baratheon from, from Game of Thrones. Ningable of the, of the uh, Seven Eyes. This was Fafford's advisor. The, he, Faf would go, would go and talk to Ningable, and he was just like, or she, we don't know what he was, just this cloak with these seven glowing lights, and every once in a while a stalk would come up. I think it was an alien, like a literal alien from another planet, and he would give give advice to a, to a theft. And then, of course, Grey Mouser had Sheba of the Eyeless Face, and Sheba was, except it was just pitch dark in the robes. So these were uh, their mentors. The Rat God. The Rat God lived un underneath Lankmar. There was rats, and the rats were intelligent, and they had a hierarchy, and they worshipped the Rat God. And in a couple of stories, a gray mouser would take a potion and shrink and transform into a mouse. So, like half the book was was set in the in the Rat City. Uh, I'm trying to remember if if anything interesting that I remember. No, I don't. Okay, yeah, these are the books. Swords Against Devil Tree is the first one. Swords of Ice Magic. This one I I, uh, I lost while reading it, so I bought it again. And then I found my original copy. So this book I actually read twice. But th these are pretty good. <coughs> Pardon my cough. And then these are made up. The God of the Bugbears. The Centaurs. Dwarves. Moradin. The Elves. Corinthian. Larethian. You know, so this is just like a... From from D and D modules, they, they deep shalashas. The aquatic elves worship him. The drow worship Loloth. There's a lot of the drow elves giving a some uh, rights to the to the dread spider lord. Riffalane, Rathalane, the leaf lord. Scorius Stonebones, the king of the rocks. Garl, glitter gold, the king of the gnome, the god of the gnomes. Maljubala, yet. Goblin Lord, Yandala, you know, the Sea Mother of the Koatoa. I can, in my in my role playing games, the Koatoa is another name for Deep Ones, and she's just another like the, the leader of of a, a tribe of Deep Ones. I thought that I always liked that picture. What's his name again? Semuyana. Vaprak the Destroyer. Grumash. Grumash the One-Eyed Lord of the Orcs. How cool is that? And then the Norse mythology. Okay, the, look at that. Odin. That's just cool. That's just cool. Freak and Gary. Odin's Wolves. Hugin and Munin. Odin's Ravens. Slipnir. Odin's Eight-Legged Horse. Balder, God of Beauty, the Fenris Wolf. Everybody knows the Fenris Wolf. Not enough drawings in this, though. Forseti, Fossa Grimms, Frey, God of Sunshine and the Elves. Golden Bursty, the Frey's Golden Boar, Freya. I know she's supposed to have a cloak of, of feathers. Frigga, if you saw the movie, that's Frigga. Heimdale. The Bright God, Guardian of the Bifrost Bridge. He's, his skin is supposed to be pure white. His beard is supposed to be white. Cause he, cause he's basically a star in the sky. And he hangs out on the Rainbow Bridge like like the morning star. And he observes everything. He looks exactly like Ilgis Elba. Exactly. Look at that picture. Garm, another large wolf. Hela. Hela is the daughter of Loki. Loki transformed into into a female shape and kept the, a giant occupied while the while the gods uh, built the walls. I think that's the story. And he gave birth to no 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 no. He had a giantess girlfriend, and he would go and visit her. And she gave birth to uh, to Hela, the Midgard serpent, and and, and uh, Fenris wolf. 
And then there's another story where Loki transformed into a woman to keep a giant occupied and then uh, gave birth to another creature, Jormung, or the Midgard Serpent. There's Loki, everybody's favorite Loki. I, I always thought that was a cool picture of Loki just running away on the water, Thor's chasing him. The Norns. Sif. Goddess, she's goddess of excellence and skill, but she's also goddess of the dawn, uh, the dawn, and that's why she's in the story. She starts out with golden hair. No, she, yes, she starts out with golden hair, and Thor used to brag about her beautiful golden hair, beautiful gold. And Loki, he wasn't hearing any of that. And when she fell, asleep, Loki got her drunk, because you know they're Vikings, they're always drinking, and uh, shaved her head bald. And when Thor saw it, even Loki realized he went too far, and Loki just went and hid, and he knew he had to. Uh, make up for it so he went to the dwarves he's like you got to make got to make her hair you got to make her hair and um, they're like well what do you have to pay he goes nothing he goes well then we'll make her hair out of nothing and they took the darkness of the night and made a black wig so loki went and sip was crying and he she put it on her head and it became real hair and thor thor thought she was even more beautiful with the jet black hair but it's the dawn the the, the golden gives way to the dark and the dark goes back to the golden here he is, Surtur. And Thor. I always love that picture. Funny thing about this picture, I said before that I went to a Gary Khan in, in, Lake, in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, and they were selling the art, and I actually had the original in my hand for 150 bucks, and uh, I just couldn't buy it. I, I had a little quarrel with Jeff D. He's very self-righteous, and I, I just... I, I, I kind of kick in myself that I didn't buy it. Look at that. Should I should have just separated the art from the artist. That's my mistake. And bought it. I wonder if it's still for sale. Thrym, Lord of the Fro Frost Giants. Tyr, a very underrated god. He put his hand in the uh, in the Fenris wolf's mouth, and uh, got his. When the Fenris wolf realized he was bound, he bit his arm off. He bit his hand off, but he didn't pull away and became the. You know, everybody respected because of that. The Valkyries. The Sumerian mythology, they kind of overlap with, you know, some people could put the Babylonian and the, Sumer and the Sumerian in, in the same camp, kind of like the Roman and Greek, but there's some similarities, some differences. I'm going fast enough because I didn't realize. Oh, that's the end anyway. And then here's a maps of, of the D&D universe, you know, the prime material plane, the positive plane, the negative plane, and the, the elemental planes, and all, all the elements, how they line up. You know, I used to be so into all this stuff. And then you take this the astral plane to where the outer planes are and how the, how the alignments match up with the... I, I used to love this stuff. I, oh, man. And then here's just graphs of, of the gods. And that's... <laughs> a little math problem there. And that's the DD's Demigod Cyclopedia. Let me know if, if you if you liked that I strayed from comic books. Uh, I, I was looking for uh, Walt. I was looking for Will Eisner's a contract with God, and I, I can't find it. And I stumbled upon this. Me, and my dirty painted hand. So uh, if if you enjoyed this, let me know. If if you didn't enjoy this, I, I won't do it anymore. You know, it's all up to you. It's supposed to be fun. If it's not fun, then then why do it, right? But I had a blast. But you know, you people, I'm, I'm asking you for your time to to watch my videos. So you are the people that matter. So let me know. Please like my videos. Please uh, comment. I, I love the comments. Some of them are pretty funny. And a couple of people have been emailing me and talking to me. One, one, one guy in particular, Easy Breezy. How you doing, Easy? Dirty thumb up to you. I, I'm enjoying your, your Twitter comments. Very nice. Thank you very much. So hope you like this. Please tell your friends. You know, my, I was getting one subscriber a day for a while, but that kind of dropped off. So I'm, I'm at 73. Let's make it to 100. Okay? Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.